especially at the moment, like, it's a bit different in England. We've got a little more control on like bigger PA systems and stuff, but touring in clubs and things, it's... Um, sometimes what we do is a bit overcomplicated, and so what tends to happen is, instead of to try and just replicate the record, in that environment would be so... It'd be so kind of... It'd be very... Um, I don't know what the right word is, but it'd be kind of... It'd be boring in a sort of way. And what we mostly feel, like after doing the sound checks, with loads of trouble and hassle, and equipment not working properly, and, and um, I've had a lot of problems, like uh, with um, power supplies, you know, to a lot of the equipment. And we're getting huge hums and stuff, and um, projectors were breaking down. And the whole thing, you, well, all you can do, uh, to be honest, and for us in those situations, is just kind of. It's, it's kind of the frustration and the energy side that comes out. Um, it isn't something I, I would see us doing forever, you know, d just for the hell of it, you know. It's more of a thing that it suits that environment. It's the only thing that works in that, in the, under those conditions, mm -hmm. under the conditions of things not going right. And it's that you just you still put, put something across to people, mm -hmm. you know. It's not it's not a weak version of the album or a sort of a pale version of the album mm -hmm. or you know less kind of a produced a perfect version it's it's different mm -hmm. you know it's more there is a lot of aggression because it touring in general is kind of tiring mm -hmm. and frustrating and the things the reasons why we do things in the studio on a record most of them don't exist when we tour you know they're and that can, that can be that can be annoying for people you know can they can kind of be disappointed because it's like um you know, the things about us they really like, it just don't exist sometimes live. And um, it's something that, I, I mean, hopefully it's part of the process of tying the whole thing into one whole thing, but I don't know if we might ever achieve that, I'm not sure. But we basically, we, the important thing is just to, it's a, it's a feel thing, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. really. But ultimately, ultimately, um, and the environment that we're, we play in at the moment, doing what we do feels best. Mm -hmm. Whether it, whether it's exactly what people want, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, probably not. But the main thing is that that we can come out of it feeling not com totally frustrated. You know, like if we we're just trying to create the record, and we had all these problems and nothing sounded right. Because a lot of what we do is is a very fine balance. You know, there's a fine balance between it working and not working. And sometimes in live envir environments you haven't got that fine balance at mm -hmm. all. It's very, very ham-fisted really compared to what you can do with the record. I see. And um, it's difficult. Also, I can't control the context and how the instruments are presented exactly because I'm not out front mixing it. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is just to put it, put across an attitude. I see. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and just give something, give people something to remember really, and give something, it gives them a feeling of some sort, mm -hmm. at least affect people in some way. I see. The uh, basic nature of the music, mm. uh, is, it seems to be rather than uh, something very aggressive, it's more introspective. Um, um, just quite constantly introspective, always sort of turning back in to yourselves. Mm. Is that a apt uh, observation, I think? Is that a part of the band? Um, I, su I suppose, I don't know really, it depends. Because um, a lot of it isn't conscious. It isn't a conscious effort to yeah. create that feeling. It just kind of comes out that way. But um, um, sometimes it feel like it feels like when I'm playing parts in the studio, they feel kind of they might feel kind of aggressive at the time, or 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 kind of attacking, but. By the time I realised the whole idea, they off, lots of things offset that feeling, mm. and you get a, an overall sense of something else. And um, it's like lots of moods within within something. So maybe that's why people feel it's introspective because they can't they can't lock on to an exact mood or an exact you know clear feeling. Mm. So they feel it, it, by by the term introspective, that's often. It's sort of a, it's associated with a kind of a lack of total understanding of what's going on. Sometimes, you know, I suppose mm -hmm. when someone's being 
when something's seen as being like that, it's somehow going into itself, which people on the outside aren't quite sure where it's, where it's oh, starting see, or going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I suppose that can that can be the, the effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of it isn't conscious. Like I'm, I'm often sort of occasionally surprised at how songs turn out. Mm. You know, they they have the picture, but I didn't realise that the picture would sound that way. Mm. You know. I thought it would sound something like something else. I, I sometimes have an idea of what a song would be, and, I, and it's there, the bits and the parts, and then by the time it's finished, I, I'm listening to it, and it's it's what I thought it, what I wanted to do, but it doesn't sound at all like I expected. Sometimes it's better, and sometimes it's not worse, but um, sometimes I get occasionally along the way I get a preconceived idea about how the song might turn out, mm -hmm. and by the time I realise the whole thing, it's it's not like that at all. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, it seems like, you know, your music, uh, mus the music of some of the bands that he refers to as house, which may not be an apt way of describing them, but I guess it just means sort of the way the psychedelic, the, the bands that perform sort of psychedelic music coming out of the UK now. Why is there this emphasis on, on uh, creating this sort of a psychedelic trip for the listener? What's, um, what's accounted for that? So no, I mean... Well, it depends. House, well, house music in it, d d d might be important to sort of establish how the term house. I mean, just in case. But um, house music, as in like electronic house music. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was a little bit caught up on. What, what yeah. he was referring to. House you that do you that you do you about Oh, that kind of yeah. house music. Um, well, I mean, for example, 808 State. That what that comes from is just that. Um, well, people, it started off not not exactly trippy in, from America, the house music from America. Yeah, look, that stuff in America is probably different. Yeah. It's, it's like inner, you know... Inner city, yeah, uh, yeah, and all the sort of Chicago yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah. And, um, but I think what happens is people, when people do like a drug like ecstasy, mm -hmm. right, and had that music blasting out, like, mm -hmm. at, over you know, massive speakers in small clubs, and, um, it created a whole feeling that it did it did take people somewhere, put people on another it, it was this kind of a modern psychedelic experience. Right. Um, and um, I think that's and then the music began to reflect that. Mm -hmm. That and people started making the music sounding that way. And in a, in a sense you got modern a sort of modern psychedelic music with house music mm -hmm. more than rock music. Yeah. Really. And um, bands like us hear music like that. And, I get, and I've been to clubs, and I've been a bit out of my head in clubs, and it's just been very affecting. It's been a huge, strong effect. Mm -hmm. Something that, that wipes away most rock gig experiences. Mm -hmm. So powerful and loud. Yeah. And um, you basically, when something affects you, it just comes out in your music. You just mm. And the, often the repetitiveness, it's just that... It's, it's It kind of... It helps... It just helps get you. You find yourself in a state of mind that does, doesn't. With, with, well, you don't necessarily. You don't have to be on drugs to really appreciate that mm -hmm. feeling. You know, if you can create it with the sound of the music. So you know, that's that's an important thing. I mean, what would our music actually like? A, a drug like acid LSD is pretty unbeneficial to listen to it with that drug. I mean, people have thought of taking it thinking that it'll enhance the listening of the music and it's actually destroyed it completely. It's put them in a really and they've had bad trips and things because yeah. it's it's too much, you know, music that suits that is more basic music and it's in a sense the original music which wasn't druggy mixed in with drugs it's, it, it would work and then when you make the music sound druggy to reflect that feeling it, you don't need the drugs as much anymore and that's why it's kind of a an oral stimulus, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. that helps people, t takes people, puts them in a state of mind, you know, without having to actually take dangerous chemicals, you know, yeah, right, right. so. It's taking the music to its most logical step, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's creating things with music, you yeah, know, right. that, that you, that, that you, that you might have felt otherwise, you mm -hmm. know. Getting back to the original question, though, why do you think that the, to the times of, uh, why has that become a sign of the times? Or why do the times uh, call for that sort of uh, music? Um, is there some larger, uh, some larger picture of it? Well, I know for well from my point of view anyway. Um, 